What's up friends? Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my What's up friends? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Pam and today I'm going to take you on a full tour of my entire houseplant collection. If you've never been to my channel before, I uh, do occasionally cuss, so this is this is your warning. But it will be a joyful cuss because we're talking about houseplants, so let's get right into it. Let's kick it off in the room you guys usually see me filming in. This is my bedroom. That is my cat doing what she does best. And uh, I'll just give you a quick sweep around. So over there is just a philodendron scandens. It is your standard green version and it will grow over there with very little light. I do occasionally bring it back over to the windows for you know a month or so and then I'll move it around. Most of my plants do get moved around. When I let go of the idea that they all needed to stay where they were forever, it actually made having plants a lot more fun because rearranging them is actually pretty enjoyable. However, I do not recommend doing that until you have a handle on any pest problems. <laughs> this is a plant I get asked about a lot. That is a Calathea setosa. I have also seen it sold as a Tenanthe. So I don't really know which one the correct one is, but I see it most often listed as a Calathea. It is pretty easy in my opinion. It doesn't like direct sunlight and um, it can get very droopy when it's thirsty, but overall it's a pretty hardy plant. And as you can see, it is huge. Something I mentioned in my last plant tour is that I always write on my tags where I got a plant and when I got it so that I know how long I've had something. So these are you know, the dueling tags for that plant and I've had it for about a year, a little over a year. This guy right here is a philodendron little fill and I'm loving how it's, I'm turning it slowly so that it sort of wraps itself around the moss pole. I actually got that from Josh's Frogs a long time ago. It was very small when I got it. And then back here, I have my Raven ZZ, which is putting out some new growth, which is pretty exciting. So in here, this is one of the magic cookie jars, as Adam from Not Dude calls them. This right here is a Monstera Peru. I actually had a tiny cutting. I got a few cuttings from Becca, from Becca De La Plants, and um, all of the cuttings just didn't make it except for this one and it was just this little nub for the longest time. I think it, uh, probably almost a year it's taken to put this leaf out but it just started growing. Very excited about that. And then I've just got some propagations in here. This is a Pilea peppermioides. And over here is just a little watermelon peperomia propagation which, you know, I'm sure will die eventually when it gets older because I can't seem to keep that plant happy to save my life. I can propagate it, but I can't keep it happy. This right here is a Peperomia piccolobanda. This is another propagation, actually. These plants propagate like crazy, like they just want to multiply. It's amazing. Back here's one of my newer acquisitions. This one, I can't say the name, but I will put it on the screen for you, but it is a jewel orchid and it is so freaking cool. I love this thing. I have to do a little more research on how to best keep it, but for now it is in moss in a jar just to maintain a little humidity, but not too much. So this is kind of the same thing with this. It no longer needs the lid on where I was trying to get it to propagate. Once they grow, I kind of leave it open and then they just have a little bit of extra humidity in there. So on the table over here is my Begonia Starry Nights. I got this from Steve's Leaves and I absolutely love this Begonia. It is beautiful. And this one kind of went dormant on me toward the end of the spring, but then it perked right back up and is now looking like this a few months into its regrowth. So that's pretty cool. I'm cool with that. You want to go sleep for a month? That's cool. So right here we have a Calathea lancifolia. This is the rattlesnake Calathea. And this one's just been hanging out on my night table for a little bit. And then behind it, I have a Pixie Peperomia. This is actually a propagation that I made from a bigger plant that I'll show you in a bit. Then here I have my Raphidophora tetrasperma. And this thing, I don't know what's going on with it. It's kind of like looking like this. And that makes me real nervous. Like, what is that? It's not mosaic disease or something, is it? Maybe one of y'all can tell me. It looks real sad though, and I don't know why. It doesn't have pests. I, I just, I have no, 
idea what's going on with that plant. Frankly, I feel like every aeroid that I had a difficult time getting my hands on has been a total pain in the ass, so good times. And up here beside Mr. Price is my Hoya macrophylla that Lyra from Lyra Loves Leaves on Instagram sent to me. You will see quite a few Hoyas from Miss Lyra. She is very kind with her Hoya collection, so it's also a little bit dusty. And then up just above, we have a second round of blooms from my Hoya Lacunosa. This is the um, cinnamon scented Hoya, supposedly. I don't really think it smells like cinnamon though, just my opinion. And up here is one of my favorite plants. Love this plant so much. This is a Cissus adenopoda. And I got this from Steve's Leaves. These are actually pretty tricky to track down. I learned about them on Summer Rain Oaks's channel because she has one and I just love them. The leaves are so cool. And this one kind of went almost completely dormant on me over winter, but it did come back with the spring, so I was very relieved. I thought it was a goner. And then down here, Hanging out with Gaia, we have a little rescue mini Philanopsis orchid that I got from Stop and Shop. It was on the clearance rack and uh, it's put out three leaves since I rehabbed it. I actually have a video on my channel about that if you want to check it out. Right now it is just sitting in this sphagnum moss. It was having, I don't know, I don't do as well with the bark chips because I'm not a good soaker waterer <laughs> you need to remember to like kind of really soak those so that they actually get some water before it just drains out this is a little easier for me to maintain so i've had a lot better luck with orchids in just sphagnum moss and then back here this a very old christmas cactus is actually from a friend of mine it was her grandmother's christmas cactus uh, so it's, it's quite old quite old um I'm struggling to remember how long, but I think she said it was about 60 years old. So that's pretty cool. And this was a piece that had broken off her plant, so she potted it up. I have a lot of luck keeping my holiday cactus like in windows. If they're like really just getting the weather and the sun of almost being outside, I feel like they bloom pretty well for me when it's time for them to bloom. And then I will take you through this little area. This is mostly a north window. So down here we have my Mandula pothos, which is actually just a really beautiful plant. It's got quite a few almost white leaves like this, and it's just it's always been very healthy since I got it. So really big fan of that plant. This is another Peperomia scandens. This is the variegated version. Back here we have the literal only Peperomia obtusifolia variegata that I have ever liked. Um, this is actually sent to me as a gift as well. Houseplant Heather sent this to me. And when I got it, she said she got me this one because she thought it was really pretty and she thought maybe it would change my mind on the plant and uh, she was right. This kind of spindly little babe back here is my Philodendron Bloody Mary. I think it was getting a little shaded out for a while, so that's why it is so stretched out. So I've moved it to a better position so that hopefully it gets a little bit more light. And then this extremely tall philodendron in the back here is a philodendron irubescens. And this one just kept on growing. I, I love this thing. It's one of my favorite plants because it's so tall and silly. I may have to top it at some point and start propagating a piece of it just to manage it a little bit but right now i'm kind of enjoying seeing how far it will climb i actually picked this light up the other day for three dollars it's an led light and it's not as strong as like you know a fancy soltec light or anything but i thought for these lower light plants it might be just like a little additional boost at the end of the day that I can turn on and it's actually a pretty pleasant light. So I'll let you guys know how that works out. So this is a heart leaf fern and I've had it for about a year and a half and I've found that the key to the heart leaf fern is to never let it breathe the same oxygen as you. And in here, I have a Pelionia repens and it is coming back from being very, very sad over winter. And um, I really realize this is definitely a terrarium plant and it does not belong like the heart fern uh, breathing oxygen with us. 
However, it does not like breathing no oxygen, so I sort of just keep this slightly adjust. Oh, cat hair, my god. This is also my cat's favorite window. So I'll just keep this, you know, like a jar like that. A jar, ah. Okay, Syngonium rei, and um, it's, you know, it's a little fussy. It doesn't always seem very happy. I've put it under glass, and it seems to be slightly happier, so I think this may be another one destined for the uh, rehabbed fish tank terrarium I plan on doing in the near future. And up here we have a Skindapsis pictus. This is the regular version, and then over here I have the Silvery Ann variation. And then over here you just have the standard Devil's Ivy, regular old pothos, the golden pothos, and uh, my favorite picture of my son, and some new artwork I got. So this is the uh, dining room, I guess, the main room, the middle room of my apartment. Um, this is where most of my plants are, so let's do it. Just so you know, uh, a few plants will be missing because I'm repotting them in a video in a little bit, so you guys will see them then. Okay, so up here, that is Twiggy. Not all my plants have names, but I've had that one for a super long time. That is my Pachira aquatica, it's, uh, aka Chinese money plant, I think. And I got that in a four inch pot a long time ago, and it just grew into a tree, and it's definitely one of my plants I would grab if my house was on fire. So And down in Twiggy's pot I just have this Pilea peppermioides. This is my big plant um, and that's just hanging out down here. I just moved it over here so it's still leaning from its last not as great spot. Um, and then back there I have a Haworthia that is rooted into that pot just because I clipped the top of a plant off and I just kind of stuck it there because I just didn't feel like dealing with it and it rooted so I'm just going to leave it alone for a little bit and then I'll repot it <laughs> eventually. So right here I have my philodendron burly marks and this one was not growing for a super long time and it is just now starting to put out some leaves so that's pretty cool and then this right here is my philodendron prince of orange I've had this since it was a tiny little starter plug from Josh's Frogs. And, and same with this Philodendron Moonlight. Uh, I, don't, I, think, I think it got a little sunburned right there. I'm not too sure what happened there. This is my very dusty from being in a window um, Christmas cactus. Actually, this is a Thanksgiving cactus. I just got that from Walmart a couple years ago. And it's looking pretty rough because it was uh, sitting in a window collecting pollen for a few months. Um, I just moved it here, so I got to give it a shower and clean it up still. Right here we have my Othello coleus. This is one of my favorite plants. It is gorgeous. No explanation needed. Just look at that thing. And yes, I do keep it over winter. I have a whole video on coleus. If you need help maintaining one indoors, I got you covered. And right here is a goldfish plant, and it's a little sparse because I kind of up-potted it a little too much, but it's slowly growing and filling in, and I just put it in this window, and it was not quite getting as much light, so I think it'll do a little better there. We'll see. And then over here is another rescued uh, Philanopsis orchid from the grocery store. It is just starting to put this leaf out. It put this one out over winter, and it's really growing into the pot I have it in, so hoping that that one will bloom for me again someday. So this up here is either a Hoya DS70 or a Bilbata. I'm not too sure what the correct one is, but I got that, you know, just like at a box store like about a year ago. Um, but it's a nice, healthy and thick plant. It's been growing since I got it, so pretty happy with that one. More Peperomia scandens. This is a spider plant that came off of the mama over there, which we'll get to. So we have a Haworthia tessellata, which I just cut all the dead flowers off of. It's flowering like crazy. It's got all these little pups coming off the side of it. So it, uh, it looks somewhat dead, but it is uh, doing things. It's doing things. This cactus here, I just got this at Lowe's. Um, I don't actually know exactly what kind of cactus it is. I think it's a barrel cactus. Um, but it's been pretty happy right under the grow lights here. So 
Um, that's my first like spiky cactus. So I figured I needed to have one. So th there it is. If you've been watching my channel, you may recognize this is the Hoya Obscura that I just got in the mail from the wonderful Giovanna. Very excited to have that and I'm curious to see if these will get the red leaves under the grow lights because they seem to simulate the sun for most plants so over here i have a couple of lithops i did have there was one more in this pot but um i followed some rigid advice with plants which never do you know <laughs> i mean it's good to get advice from pros but um i didn't listen to pros I listened to the internet and i killed one of my lithops so now I water them when they look like they need water <laughs> instead of following some weird seasonal schedule that my plants are not on. So I have those in here with just a little, with a little broken piece of a succulent there. And back here you may recognize this from my Ferris Land terrarium build with Aaron Deathly. The Nepenthes is doing quite well in there. It, uh, it lives on a fine diet of fungus gnats, um, thanks to some of the recent purchases that I've made for terrariums. <laughs> um, and unfortunately, the sundews did not take well to being pulled apart, and they, they have passed on. And I absolutely did not maintain the moss, nor did I manage to keep it wet enough to keep it alive. So that's why this looks a hot mess. But the Nepenthes is fine. The Nepenthes is doing well. <laughs> it's growing, growing a little bit right there. So could be worse. And back here, these guys need a little water in their tray, but these are the two Saracenias that were sent to me by accident um, for my birthday from Aaron. And um, they, I actually got the corrected plants later on, so we'll get to those. But if you just saw my recent mail unboxing, um, these are the Saracenias that I received in error, and they're doing okay under the light here. I do need to figure out some kind of bog garden and maybe put them outside. Um, so hopefully we can get to that before they pass on, but they're doing okay so far. And here is Igoroth. That's my son named him, Igoroth, I think. Um, and it's doing fine. Just doing pretty good. These are the Venus fly traps. Uh, they definitely like this light. Uh, that is definitely enough light to make them grow and keep them happy. Got nice red middles there, and it's been growing like crazy since I picked it up. See the carcass of a son of a bitch fungus gnat there? Yeah. Yeah. That's what you get. Somebody must be trying to exert their rights somewhere. This is my string of bananas, and it is doing pretty well over here. It gets a little mix of the eastern sun as well as the grow light, and I keep it kind of off to the side so it's not directly under the grow light. So that seems to be where it's happy. Same for this right here. This is a Crassula perforata, I believe. Yeah. And that's doing pretty well over here too. I actually, when I received this, one of the tops had broken off, so I planted it and it's made like 50 little tops since then. So pretty cool plant. Okay, moving right along. I hope you guys are still with me. Here is a Peperomia rotundifolia, which is possibly one of my favorite Latin names. Um, this is the Peperomia hope. And I know a lot of people have trouble with this one, but I've never really had too much problem with mine. So I just kind of treat it like a succulent. I water it probably a little bit more than a succulent, but you can really tell when these leaves are starting to, to lose their firmness and then you know you can water it then. I just try not to let it get too bad, but yeah, for the most part, it's been pretty easy for me. This right here is a somewhat unknown Hoya Lyra from Lyra Loves Leaves, again, um, provider of many of my Hoyas, she sent this up to me and she thinks it might be a Hoya David Cummingii, Cummingi Cummings GI. I, I, my brain's already tired. So she thinks it might be that David Cummings guy's Hoya. It was just a few leaves when she sent it up to me and it's, it's just killing it right now. This is another Hoya from Lyra. This is a Hoya Curtisii, and this one sat doing nothing for a very long time over winter, and it is now just starting to grow, which makes me very happy because, you know, it's not, I'm not happy until a plant I get grows like one new leaf, and then it's like, it's mine, you know? 
I know I'm not alone in that. So here is my Hoya Astralis. This is the one that I got that came with free mealy bugs. That was the best. Um, fortunately, it was just those two. I didn't ever see any more on this one. And um, I have now integrated it back in with the other plants. I feel pretty safe about it. I literally just put it here yesterday. So it's probably been in quarantine for like two months now. Kind of like us. <laughs> Don't mind my ugly cordage back there. I gotta figure that out. I, I don't know who puts a outlet up there on the wall, but whatever. Um, so this is my begonia black mamba. This was also a lovely and generous gift. Vanessa sent this up to me. Dirty roots on Instagram. So kindly cut off some of her plant and it has been doing wonderful right here. Just getting the diffused light from the grow lights, not really catching any bright light from anywhere. So, uh, so far, so good. <clears throat> Rosario. 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 So right here is a Hoya Rosario way, I think is how you say it. There you go. There's the name for you. And um, this one is in a bag because it also came with mealy bugs. Different greenhouse, same bullshit. Kind of the name of the game with Hoyas from what I understand, but I mean, this to me is how it came and this looks like a damage. I mean, I would have checked this plant before sending it out because almost every leaf looked that way. It has put out some more leaves since I got it, so it's doing fine. Once again, I haven't seen any more mealy leaves since that first little sighting of them, so I'm sort of leaving the bag mostly shut, but not all the way, just to keep her problems to herself. I wouldn't recommend something like this for like spider mites or any other kind of pest, but with mealy bugs, I, you know, if it's just one or two that you've spotted, I, I would. it's probably best to keep it away from your other plants, but I've had this in the bag away from other plants for about a month, and now, you know, now it's kind of sitting here with the other plants, but still isolated. Under here, we have a little bonsai ficus ginseng, and I got it because it looks like a sassy lady lounging from a certain angle. You got to there it is. I actually got this and it came with spider mites, but we cleared it up. It's doing well. I think I need to come in here and probably prune it because I, I think that's how bonsai works. I don't, <laughs> didn't really think that one through to be honest with you. Got a variegated string of hearts here. I actually got one small little strand of this attached to a regular string of hearts. So it must have gotten pulled off another plant and I've just been slowly propagating it since so this is what we're up to about two years later <laughs> i'm not the best at string of hearts but i can keep them alive and growing they're just not always living their absolute best life so we're trying new things we'll see how it goes i think maybe i should stop putting them in these too but you know since when <laughs> since when isn't that an issue and then there's also a little air plant tucked in there. I'm not totally sure on the Latin name of that one. I'll put it on the screen. I've got a Hoya Compacta Variegata over here. This is the Hindu rope. I, once again, Lyra sent this to me, which is just amazing because this is a hard to find one. And it's just starting to grow new leaves now. It didn't really do a whole lot for the first, like maybe six months that I had it, but it is growing now, baby. And this right here is a philodendron royal queen this was another sweet gift from cody from the plant channel he has an awesome plant shop that you can check out if you follow him i'll put his information on the screen and he gets his hands on some very awesome plants and he sent this to me as well as that little guy over there that we'll get to we'll get to all right down here i've got one of my pots of monstera siltipacana the black begonia back there is a begonia hollows eve this is a cutting from my grandmother's calanchoes that are starting to finally look a little happier they came 
pretty beat up, but we're, we're working on them. And here is one of my moss globe propagation globes. <laughs> so in here, I have a Peperomia meridiana. I have a Peperomia piccolobanda. And sitting inside of it, what are you? Oh, you're a micans. And then in there is just a little piece of philodendron micans that fell off when I was repotting mine last week. So I just tucked it in there to see if I could get it to root. I really love propagating this way. It looks super cute, first of all, and it seems to work really well for Peperomia. So I just have one of those little clippy grow lights down here on this bottom shelf because it wouldn't have gotten enough light otherwise. This is a Peperomia caparata. This is the silver ripple variety. And this one looked terrible for a little while. It is just starting to come back. Peperomia definitely like these kind of low level grow lights. They do pretty well with just the little cheap grow lights. So if you're having trouble with your Peperomia, give that a shot. Keep in mind that peperomias are usually summer dormant, so if they're not doing a lot right now, don't worry about that. And this is my original peperomia meridiana plant. I got just the saddest mess of a plant from Josh's frog, so it's, it's always been a little Dr. Susie, but we're working on it. I'm just propagating pieces of it as it grows all silly and dumb. <laughs> so. Back here is another recent acquisition. This is a Begonia Lepon from Steve's Leaves. Love this plant. It is so cool looking. This is a propagation that I made that I'm quite proud of. This is a propagation that I made from just a few cuttings of lace flower plant that I rooted inside of a washed out plastic tub from a hummus that I you know, recycled to use as a propagation container. I do have some videos about that. I will um, link that below if I remember. Just a tiny little propagation of lace flower, and I think I put maybe three or four of them in this pot, and it's just grown so beautifully, and it did just finish flowering. You can see there that it's just finished up. There might actually be more, yeah, it looks like there's more flowers coming too, so very excited about that. I actually like this more than the original plant that I made it from. <laughs> Back here is another Peperomia. I, for some reason, can never remember, Ginny. Is it Peperomia Ginny? I think. Um, I can never remember the, the name of this Peperomia, but I'll put it on the screen. So I got this as a gift from my friend Kristen um, for my birthday or something one year. Or I can't remember why she sent me plants, but you know, just because she's a nice lady. Okay, so that is the whole Ikea shelf. <laughs> Moving on. Got a couple mixed pots of coleus there. The red coleus I've had for, God, like 10 years or something now. Um, I do have to like keep taking cuttings and like remaking pots of it because it does get leggy and crappy indoors eventually. Um, so that's kind of my, one of my secrets to coleus. But once again, I have a video about that if you're curious. Down here is a begonia taconite. And this one is super cool too. It gets these really big leaves that have a cool shift to them. And the undersides, the abaxial sides are red. Super neat. <coughs> That is a bird's nest fern down there, and it's much happier here than it was in the bathroom where I had it for a while. It was constantly getting bumped, and people would throw their towels on the hook, and the you know, towel would beat it up and stuff. So it is much happier since I moved it out here. So it's nice to see that one looking shiny and nice again. Over here is a Dracaena or Sansevieria cylindrica. Um, this one, it's got the brown brown tips and stuff. I actually kind of had this pushed back and didn't water it probably as much as I should have, which that's impressive for a snake plant, but you know. This is supposedly a silver sword philodendron. I think it's kind of just some sort of weird cultivar, but because um, some of the leaves were misshapen, but they are starting to look a little bit more like they're supposed to now that it's finally growing, so we'll see how it looks in a few months but i got that from peppers and they were selling it as like a silver moonlight philodendron so whatever that is it's a sansevieria or dracaena um zylindrica 
And then we've got a begonia whitey eye right here, the angel wing begonia. This one, and you know, we've had some struggles, this plant and I. Uh, it's come back and died back and come back and died back, but for right now, seems to be doing okay. Of course, we have the beautiful Monstera Albo that Rachel from Heart Shape Leaves sent me. And she is doing fine. Definitely rooted in there now. You can tug on it and she's in there. So very happy about that. Apologies for the grow light color here, friends. So I have a couple more of these little propagation globes. This one has some Hoya curtisii, Pilea peppermioides. We've got some more back there. So back there is a Dracaena Samurai or Sansevieria Samurai. I got that from Becca De La Plants when we did a plant swap. For some reason, I am completely blanking on the name of this plant. Hopefully I'll remember it. <laughs> can't remember the name, can't remember the common name, where I got it, nothing. This is a piece of my grandmother's all green spider plant. So this is like the, the OG spider plant. I'm very excited about this. It was looking a little sad when I got it, but like most spider plants, it's pretty hardy. So it perked right back up and I have it in here so my cat can't eat it. He will fuck up a spider plant. So in here I have the somewhat sad looking uh, return of my Sissus discolor. I put it under glass and chopped it up and it is definitely growing, but it doesn't seem to be super happy. So I think it probably needs a repot. It might need more air than it's getting. Uh, might need a little less light. I, I don't, I'm not too sure. If you have any ideas, let me know. These plants are difficult and uh, they bum me out. This is a cutting from my grandmother's Christmas cactus. So Got a couple little growth points in there. Pretty happy about that. So baby air plants from Lyra. Baby Kalinkoes from Lyra. This is a baby Peperomia propagation that I'll probably just give to somebody. Here's my Philodendron Brandy from Cody. It's doing all right. It might have some kind of leaf spot issue going on. I'm kind of, I'm watching it. I'm watching it just in case. Down here we have a recovering begonia autumn ember. This was one of my most beautiful begonias and it fell, I think three times in one week somehow. It was pretty unbelievable. Um, and it's just now starting to come back. And once again, like these kind of begonias are just they're pretty tough. So here are a couple of plants from my childhood best friend. She passed them on to me when she moved to Texas uh, a bazillion years ago. So I've had them for probably like 15 years and then she had them for quite a few years before that. But I have a Sansevieria and Dracaena Laurentii. Um, and then this is just an aloe plant. This is actually a pop off the bigger plant that I have from her. And then I have some lucky bamboo back here. This is a thank you gift for photographing a friend's wedding. Um, and then up here is your standard green ZZ plant, Philodendron micans, which I recently repotted into this Wally Grow loop planter. So far it is really happy. I think between the grow light and the planter, it is just like, so much happier than it was in a clay pot hanging in another window. So pretty happy with that decision. My daughter made those for me when she was in like kindergarten or something. If you ever wondered why those are there. Very sad Ruby Cascade Peperomia. I don't know what happened with this. It was very happy until very recently. Uh, the bottom down here, I think it's just not getting enough light up here because the bottom seems pretty happy and that's catching the grow light. So I may have to move this into the window because it was a lot happier before. I know a lot of people have trouble with these, so I won't beat myself up too much. Plus I have it in a clay pot and they actually need a little bit more water than most peperomias. Like right now I can tell this is floppy. It needs to be watered. Well, I just watered it before I started, but it's still floppy. So up here we have your standard Aglionema. This is the Maria variety. It's actually putting off a little pop over here filling in and it just flowered 
Yeah, it just flowered up there. Uh, this is one of my first house plants that I got, and I, you know, aglionemas are pretty underrated. They really are. They, they're good, sturdy plants. They don't need a lot of light, and a lot of them are very pretty. So back there, I have a very leggy Peperomia obtusifolia that I think is either reaching for the light or is just, uh, or maybe it just grows like that, but I think perhaps it's not getting quite as much light as it needs up there because it's getting quite tall during its supposed non-growing season. This is a little sock monster that my friend made for me. Here is the original lace flower plant and when I got it it was pretty goofy from Josh's Frogs. It was like a long vine um, so that's why this plant isn't quite as even and lovely as the one that I made from Propagations but you can see this one is about to bloom as well. I wish it was open so I could show you. We've got a dope Zero Graphica air plant right here. Love that thing. It's a very curly right now because it probably needs to be watered it desperately. So we're going to do that when I'm done doing this. So that is that little area right there. And just swinging around to in front of the window. This is my philodendron from the greenhouse down the road. I'm still not entirely sure which philodendron this one is. So this actually came from a greenhouse with a huge thematophyllum bipenophy... I almost got there, guys. Um, but so I'm not sure if this was like a propagation from that giant plant and it's not actually a philodendron or if it's a philodendron little hope. I, I'm not... I'm not totally sure. I think it's a philodendron though, but I don't know. I've had it for a while. It's always been pretty floppy like this and never looks totally happy, but it is light years better than it used to be. Okay, here we have the solitary leaf of a recently back from dormancy um, Alocasia amazonica. So that is one pretty leaf right there. This is a one of my Maranta lemon limes. I have cuttings from this all over my house. These things are prolific. And right here, and then right here is one of my favorite Monsteras. This is a piece from the grocery store pot of Monsteras that was actually like four plants that I broke up in my planty kindness video. You can see how big the leaves are. They're huge. And it's just growing very nicely on the moss pole. All in all, very attractive specimen. I'm pretty happy with that one. And then we have Big Mama here. Not as attractive, but glorious nonetheless. Oh, here is the little pile of plants I use to hide the unattractive uh, heating hole in my wall from the heater that will be being replaced this fall. So hopefully I'll get something a little more attractive. But for now, we're just hiding it with plants. So here is my giant Monstera. I inherited a piece of that from a broken up older plant that a friend got a hold of. The plant had been allowed to vine, so um, it's actually been kind of hard to get it to go upright because it really wanted to just fall all over the floor but slowly we're training it I need to get some more cocoa to wrap the rest of the pole so that it doesn't look quite that stupid but yeah that's that's a big mama I've had her for probably about eight years now I think and then that is the big spider plant my mom gave me and I really like how that looks right there hopefully my cat leaves it alone and then um, this is a peace lily over here. This is one of the giant peace lilies, which I think are highly underrated plants. They have these big, awesome leaves. They're super easy to take care of. They're thirsty as hell all the time, but I mean, who isn't? They're basically like the smaller, cuter bird of paradise for people who don't have enough sun for a bird of paradise. Ooh, and I almost forgot this window up here. Here I have a just starting to bloom Hoyer Shepherdii. And I know it looks like a Kentiana, but it's not. It's a Shepherdii. If you look at the blooms, that's how you can tell. 
So it was actually labeled as a Kentiano when I bought it, but it's not. So this is actually the second round of blooms on this one as well. And tragically, I missed the bloom on this for the plant tour, which bums me out. But this just had a nice big bloom on it. This is a curly lipstick plant that my mom gave me a piece of hers. That's doing really well. I actually just put this here, so we're going to see how it does. This is like a northeast window. So like east is here, north is over here. So it's about a northeast window, and it's, it's probably one of the better windows in the house for plants. And I just have a philodendron Brazil right up here. All right, so we'll back up. So there you go. That is the, the big plant room with the most plants in it. If you're still hanging in here, you are a champion, and we don't have very much more to go. Okay, so now we are, I'm sorry if it's echoey in here, this is the room where I keep my grow lights and my rabbits and all my pet supplies, so it's kind of a, it's not, it's not the most aesthetic of rooms. So, so this is my western window. It gets like just a touch of southern light, but mostly it's a western window. So the plants on this side will get a skim of that southern light. They get just a little bit more than the plants on this side, so you'll notice the difference in plants from side to side here. I'm just trying to keep these things in mind while I'm designing what I want the plants to look like. You also have to keep in mind their needs. So these are my higher light plants over here. So you might recognize this one if you watch the unboxing of my grandmother's heirloom plants. So this is a bromeliad and this actually came right out of the ground at my aunt's house. She inherited all of my grandmother's plants when my grandmother passed away. And you can see it is putting off a pup. So this one, you know, it looks obviously a little banged up and stuff, but that was very clearly because it was working on putting out this guy. So oh, very excited to have this little heirloom plant from my grandmother. And then underneath it is the, this is the aloe plant that I told you guys about um, earlier that my best friend passed on to me when she moved. And then it actually has a few pups in there that also came in the package full of my grandmother, grandfather, and aunt's plants. So those belong to them back there. This is another piece of that Sansevieria that um, my friend left me before she moved as well. This table used to belong to Mike's dad and he, him and all his friends carved in it. It's pretty cool. So this is my Peperomia, my watermelon Peperomia. Peperomia Sandersii? I thought it was uh, Argeria. Did they change that? So um, I expect this will die like the other one. I'm not good at this plant. I, um, I give up after this one. <laughs> so yeah, I've watched all the videos on this plant and I don't know, I just don't get it. I just don't get it. And over here is the sole surviving piece of my grandmother's umbrella tree. Right here is the only surviving cutting from my grandmother's umbrella tree from that package. So. Hopefully uh, that eventually becomes a whole plant. We'll see. Uh, but if not, <laughs> I have this little plant and there's more where it came from, so I might have to try again. Right here is my Alocasia lauderbachiana. This is the purple sword, I think is what it's called, um, Alocasia. And I've never had this many leaves on this successfully. So I think I finally found the window that it likes and um, that's very exciting. This is a piece of a old heirloom Christmas cactus that I purchased off of Etsy. So this one's about almost 40 years old. Um, so it's just a cutting from somebody else's plant. I went through a moment where I just needed to have a bunch of different kinds of Christmas cactus in case you can't tell. So I have several other varieties over here that bloom all different colors. Another one up here. So up front over here out of the direct light. Oh my god, are you gonna die? Why do you look so bad? I don't know. Um, what the fuck are you called? 
Cantharium clarinarum. And then right here out of the direct light, I have my Antherium clarinervum. I won this in Becca De La Plants and Plant That Plants Instagram giveaway like a while back. It was before I knew Becca. It's always basically had two leaves, one nice one and one deformed one. Here is the deformed one. <laughs> but it's putting out another leaf and it's to be doing a lot of work down here. So I'm hoping to have a nice full plant like everybody else soon. Back here is another um, piece of that big Monstera. This one is going to my friend Ross when I get a chance to get that to him. So that is his monster back there. This pot is a Queen of the Night Sirius Cactus. And it actually contains two gifted cuttings of the same kind of plant. So one came from Lyra and one came from my friend Shannon. And right here is my Alocasia Maharani. I just got this from Ill Exotics not too long ago. So far it's doing all right. No sign of a new leaf just yet. This is the Antherium Fingers that I got from Aaron for my birthday recently. Antherium Padata Radiatum, I think is how you say it. This is another cutting of the Silver Satin Pothos, and this is my Peperomia Metallica. I think that this one might need to go in a terrarium. It's not doing super great out in the air right now, but it's, it's still growing, so I'm, I'm not giving up hope yet. I think it actually needs some water. And then I have an asparagus fern just hanging over here for right now. I don't know what I'm doing with that yet. So that's that table right there. And then I just have some plants under my grow light over here that did not really have good window space. So I popped them under the grow light and I turned this. This is another hidden harvest. This is his a bigger, bigger model hidden harvest light. So that's kind of pot growing strength. And I have another chunk of that coleus under here. Some recovering Sansevieria from my aunt that um, I think this one might have gotten rained on a bunch in the window. And I think it overwatered itself without me actually doing it on purpose. And then here we've got a funky looking rickrack cactus right here that I just popped in this pot and uh, stuck under here because, you know, needed somewhere to put it. I have to get rid of some plants, you guys. And then I've got a recovering Peperomia back there that seems to be liking this spot under the light. A dope Euphorbia back there that Lyra sent me. You can see all of the new growth on it, so it seems to be happy under the lights as well. Sarah Assholii, aka Adonsonii, and this, I think I may have triumphed over it. Um, it was being a real bastard, so I cut its head off and I stuck it in a pot and made a, a, a much more effective plant. You can see where it was still being a bastard down here. And I, yeah, I propagated it and I kept it in this Ikea greenhouse for a long time and just let it recover and grow. And now it is quite happy. So I think I might actually be able to keep one of these alive. And then in the little recovery greenhouse, this is sort of my plant hospital. There is a Hoya that came with mealybugs from Logies. I got this when I met Summerine Oaks and it is just, it's just, it's just not a happy plant. Uh, it did recently grow this mess here, so I don't know, then we'll see. This here is some propagations of that Peperomia Ginny in the other room. Weirdly, none of them have variegation, so that's interesting. This is my Calathea Freddy, which was always pretty happy. Um, but it's definitely in need of a repot. It needs a plastic pot so it maintains its water better. Um, and for now it's just recovering in here because it was getting a little sad. Once again, another begonia that just sort of died back and is now coming back. Seems to be pretty happy in here. And then this is the pitcher plant that Aaron recently sent me. I'm just keeping it in here for humidity purposes for now. It needs a new terrarium home, so. A Clusia plant that I recently hauled and I uh, still love it. I'm keeping it under the strong, the stronger grow light because I was told that it likes very strong light. So it's hanging under here with my peppers and stuff. 
This is, and this is the last of the tomatoes that I started from seed because as of maybe three weeks ago, you could still get away with starting some quicker varieties. And then I've got a mint and a purple basil in here just ready to go into some pots outside. If anybody's wondering about the cacti seedlings, here they are. They did take a spill onto the floor and it was very traumatic and awful, but I did replant them all and they seem to be doing okay. So fingers crossed they do okay and I didn't kill them all. Oh yeah, that is the pet slash plant room. Okay, last room guys. It is my crumbly wall falling apart bathroom. Don't judge me. We are redoing it ASAP. It's just expensive and I shouldn't have to do it because I rent. But yeah, now it is what it is. We rent in the city. Uh, so we get what we get. We don't get upset. <laughs> This is a Euphorbia Tiracali, I guess how you say it. And um, I think I picked this up at Logies at some point. Um, it's doing okay. It's definitely grown a lot of little leafy things. Hasn't done a whole lot since I got it, so see how it goes. Here is a black coral Sansevieria. This was another sweet gift. That one came from Houseplant Heather. Have another air plant back there. This one's a little beat up, but it's doing all right. I need to water those. This is the original cutting of the Hoya bilobata that I purchased um, shortly before realizing that there were whole pots of them at Lowe's and that I probably bought a piece of one of those. <laughs> so good times. This is your regular old red anthurium up there. If you guys didn't know, these turn green to help with um, photosynthesis during the winter time. I see a lot of people asking about that, but that's why they turn to green because they're trying to get the plants some more food essentially. And then um, when the summer comes and there's more light, they can go back to being red. So fun fact for you. This is one of two staghorn ferns I have in here that I would like to eventually mount. This is a particularly lovely cutting from my Marble Queen Pothos. We've got the OG wide form Monstera assholii here. One of two staghorn ferns that I have in the bathroom. And here is a particularly lovely cutting from my Marble Queen Pothos with my mother plant of my lemon lime maranta. Very beautiful. Oh, got crunchy leaves. See, I didn't even fix everything up, guys. I, I'm keeping it real here. My leaves get crunchy too. Got another cutting of the Marble Queen down there. Here is another Pachira aquatica. Dusty ass Pachira aquatica, Jesus Christ, fam. I'm so very sad. This is this is what this, this is what having children is like. Oh my God, so difficult. Oh. All right, there we go. So I'm very very sad that this begonia is in this state because this has always been one of my favorite plants, my most perfect and beautiful begonia. I think it's just, I think it's getting a little tired, <laughs> so it's starting to get a little droopy. I don't know what's going on. I haven't changed anything. It's kind of been in the same spot, but. It's still really beautiful, but it was just less droopy before. But this is a Begonia Harmonies Passing Storm. And this is by far one of the most beautiful begonias. Pretty, it's pretty easy to take care of too. You know, I'm starting to understand why this plant looks a little beat up. All of a sudden. What do you guys think? <laughs> This is my absolutely enormous Hoya Crimson Princess. I don't remember where I got this. I think it might have been the crappy nursery down the road, but um, look at this thing. Actually, I might have got this at a box store. It is so big. It is constantly putting out new growth and vines and all kinds of mess, and it's never bloomed one time. <laughs> it touches me every time I come in here. Uh, and it blocks out 80% of the light from the window, but it just, it just will not bloom yet. We, we will see.
So up here I have a shamefully unkempt um, Peperomia floribunda. So on this shelf I have a Hoya pubicalix, another string of hearts, this one's a little happier, uh, staghorn fern, very sad begonia. This is the Begonia Jolly Silver, and this one has been basically miserable since I got it. I think this would be much happier in a terrarium. And I have just a little Tillandsia in here. Don't mind my crappy wall paint. I have another Monstera Siltipicana up there. And then that big old neon Philodendron is just there temporarily. I need to put that back up somewhere and then weave the vines in, but it's there for now because it just had a shower. But there you go, there's the bathroom, and that is the final room. I do keep just a couple plants in my kitchen window that I move when I cook because anything I keep in this kitchen unfortunately gets covered in grease because for some reason no one thought to put a grease hood in over the oven, so everything in my kitchen gets wrecked. But this is a Peperomia quadrilangularis, and um, this is a really good find. I found this at Home Depot or Lowe's or something been tricky to keep happy this was a much fuller plant but I lost a lot of the branches but so far we're doing okay and it is flowering so I think we're out of the danger zone and in my crappy old window here I just have a couple oxalis plants and then my century plant from my aunt um, and then just a little burrows tail here and that's uh that's pretty much it another string of hearts another Sansevieria and then we've got this plant right here that is always sad, always blooming. Pull these off if you see them. They smell like feet and your plant is trying to die. So we're going to pull that off. Not a huge, this plant is gorgeous, but it is a pain in the ass. Let me tell you, total pain in the ass. Okay, now we're really done. Did you make it all the way to the end? Let me know. Leave a little leaf emoji down below. I need to see who the serious plant addicts are in this crowd. Thank you for sticking all the way to the end. I hope you enjoyed this plant tour, and I will see you in the next one.